ahead, move the mic around, put it wherever you need. Okay. Go ahead and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is true and accurate? I do. Thank you. Mr. Joint? Thank you. Please state your name. John Hargens. And Mr. Hargens, are you a uh, landowner that has been uh, owns land that's been targeted by Summit for their proposed pipeline? Yes, I am. And do you own two particularly targeted parcels located both in Clay County? That's correct. And you own that land along with your uh, wife, is that correct? Yes. And you and your wife, Karen, caused to be filed first amended um, version of your pre-filed testimony, and you also included exhibits and attachments to that, did you not? I believe so, yes. And if we were to walk through all of those same questions and answers that you have in your pre-filed testimony, um, but for any basic clerical errors, would your the substance of your testimony be substantially the same? Yes, I think so. And as you sit here right now, can you think of any corrections or updates that are uh, material to these proceedings? Not really any corrections, no, I don't think so. Okay. All right. I, I would offer Exhibit uh, 68 and 69, which um, are the totality of Mr. Hargan's pre-filed testimony and the attachments. Are there objections? No objection. Seeing no objection, the board will admit. Give the weight due. All right. Thank you. Sir, at this time, I'm going to tender you for cross-examination questions. Okay. Mr. Taylor? Thank you. I'm Wally Taylor. I represent the Sierra Club. And um, how and when did you first learn about this pipeline project? It was probably an informational meeting at the Spencer Events Center. Um, I think the date was October 8th, thereabouts, in, uh, what? I want to say 2020. Or maybe 21? <laughs> Sorry, yes. Yes. Um, immediately after that meeting, did you talk to a summit land agent? I myself was not at that meeting. I was calm by any means at the time. My wife went to it. Okay. She did not indicate that she had been talked to by a summit land agent at that time. Okay. Um, so when... Uh, if ever, did anybody from Summit contact you about um, the proposed pipeline on your property? Uh, we've had some phone calls, some mailings, as far as exactly. It's, it's been going on, we're kind of on, it goes in spurts, on and off again. Probably the last contact I've actually had with anybody myself would have been late February, early March of this year. I think some people have stopped and left things in the door or on the front step or talked to my wife or one of my boys, but that was probably the last time I talked to anybody. Okay. Um, has your wife indicated what contacts she's had with the Summit Land Agents? Just... Well, the, the lady would stop by, I guess, is probably who mostly... Her name was Carla. Uh, she talked was the one to talk to my wife the most. Just uh, and they just discussed pleasantries somewhat, you know, visit a little bit like people do. And she would kind of give us an update occasionally on what the current offer was. And we weren't really that in, we weren't really interested in this. It's there's a lot of questions about it being not a public utility. It's a private thing for profit. There's safety concerns. I mean, my parents bought that farm in 1962. I wasn't even born yet. Um, and at that time, they were getting started. My, my grandparents were maybe not in favor of it, considering what they paid for it. <laughs> but uh, 
through a lot of hard work and effort by my dad. He got it paid for and then bought a few more farms after that. And that's, that's all he's ever done. That's all I ever wanted to do. I've got a student at ISU in vet school. That's what he wants to do when he's done someday is come home and farm. And I just, there's too many negatives about this project, too many things that don't make sense. I, I haven't been overly excited about talking to him about it. I, I don't enjoy some of the things they said when they would stop by. Like what? Well, I don't remember his name exactly, the agent. He was probably a little younger than I am. He drove a dark-colored Nissan or Toyota pickup, had Texas plates on it. That's the last one I talked to. That's pretty much the only one I talked to over the years was when he would stop, and I haven't seen him since February. But he didn't like me. I expressed my opinion of him on the viability of the project. He didn't really want to hear that. I mean, most of the time he's telling me, oh, he's telling me it's going to go through. You're not going to get it stopped. There's too much money behind it. You just as well sign something and, and you're going to do it because they're going to get it. They've invested too much already in this point. You're not going to stop it. So it doesn't make you in a real great mood to, for any sort of negotiation. They come up with an easement that they decide is fair. They don't ask me anything about it. They just say, here it is. We think it's a great deal. You should sign this. I don't think it's a great deal. So did he mention eminent domain? Probably as close as he came to, to that. Maybe he didn't say the actual words. But when he said it's too big to be stopped, we're going to get it. You're not going to stop it. There's too much money behind it. It's basically what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Can we drop the... Uh the Kamsey. Does this map appear to be your property and where you understand the pipeline route would be? Yes. Okay. And is that the only route that you ever understood uh, would be the route of the pipeline? That's the only one I ever knew about, yes. Okay. Did you discuss with um, the Summit land agent or representative of Summit about uh, any alternative routes? I don't really recall anybody mentioning anything to me about the possibility that we, that we could reroute it. It was just, this is where it's going to be. I think you said this is it, and that, that's, that's all there is to it. That's the only way it was ever represented to me. Nothing was ever presented like it could change. It's, this yeah. is where they want it to run, and you need to just go for it. There I is. don't personally understand. I mean, I guess maybe I could have, but off the screen to the north of that, there's a, well, there's a, some people that live there that I knew him when he was a little kid, and they have a small child. I'm well, not so small anymore, but uh, be driving soon. But if I push, the danger to me is not much difference with that being a proposed 20-inch pipe. Whether you move that a couple hundred feet or 150 feet north into his property, it puts it closer to him, and it's not really going to make an appreciable difference to my survivability if anything happens. Okay. <laughs> um, there are some buildings south of your two parcels. Yes. Um, what is that? That's where I live. That's where you live, okay. Do you, do you know how, how far that is from the pipeline? Well, I would guess from the house maybe maybe 2,200 square feet, 2,200 feet to that. Take note that the house is the furthest south building on my property. Anything else, if I'm outside doing, I'm closer than that. And like I said, I have a lot of concerns about a 20-inch pipe at 2,100 pounds of pressure. I'm not exactly sure how far it's going to be between shutoff valves, but that's a lot of product that could potentially escape. And my wife and I have talked about that. There was a time not many years ago when right up in the northwest corner of that property, we were combining in the fall. The boys were young. 
I had one of them in a car seat with me, and she had the older one in the tractor with her. And we were sitting in that corner, combining and unloading. And then you think back, now that's where they want to put a pipeline. We'd have been sitting right on top of the thing. Um, has someone ever indicated to you what the um, extent of the a dispersion would be if there is a, uh, a rupture? No. What little I've learned about that is just reading various things online. I'm, I'm kind of guessing the, the number that seems to get thrown out is at 1,850 to 2,000 feet. And I don't know if that's based on an 8-inch pipe or what, but like I said, mine is a 20-inch pipe. That's what they're proposing. Is that what they've told you? That's what it shows on the map, unless they've changed it okay. until then, since then. I mean, they've asked for up to 24-inch, and... Well, let's face it, when you're putting tile in a field, if you increase a 20-inch pipe to a 24, it carries a whole lot more product, which just compounds the problem. Um, where would the nearest emergency response personnel come from if there were a rupture? Well, we're not really blessed in that department. Uh, Dickens is about 12, 12 and a half miles away. They're an all-volunteer department. Um, they're the closest, and given the way they've divided up Jillet Grove Township, that's who technically would come to our place if we had a problem. If they set out any other mutual aid calls, it would either be Webb or Royal, which is farther even than that. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes with something like this. You come driving up to it, you don't know how it's colorless. You don't know. How far it spread? I mean, where do you even stop? How do you even know where to stop to maintain the safety of their people? And I appreciate the fact that they might be able to cordon off the area and keep people back so that I can die in peace, but, you know, not really something I'm looking forward to at this age. Have you... Um investigated any other um, the locations that might even be better than that? I really haven't, I guess. Um, I... It's hard to get too serious about relocating it when it's it shouldn't even be an option or in existence. Uh, so this is, this is just a, a private deal for a lot of money. It's not like you're widening a highway or putting in electricity or clean water lines to somebody that's going to benefit all of us around. We're, we're going to be forced to live with it while somebody that lives far away from it gets to pocket the money. So you don't want it on your property at all? No. I'd prefer it to never existed. But I definitely don't want it on my property. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hmm. I well, We hope to be able to pass we're this. Not, we're not done with you. Okay. No, I figured I'd get somebody else next. So, <laughs> Ms. Colas. Good afternoon, Mr. Hargens. Uh, Ms. Ms. Colas of uh, Colas Family Farms. I have a question on this KMZ. Do you own that entire quarter? Yes. Um, you also mentioned that you were had purchased other farms? My parents have. They are both deceased now. But through the settlement of their estate, uh, that, that quarter is mine and my wife's. Uh, do you depend on this farm for your income? Object. Yeah. State the objection. Asked and answered. Um, it's in the direct testimony. I believe it's about the seventh question in every set of this testimony. This course. Are you concerned about the construction of the pipeline cutting off part of your land? Yes. Uh, I 
could have submitted tile maps. I don't have any. Uh, ever since my parents bought that, whatever tiling we've done on that farm, I know there's some there. The field drains well. We don't really have any trouble with it. Whatever we've had to do in the past to add a few here and there has been more in the center to the southern end of that quarter. We've done very little on the north end, but there has to be tile there or we couldn't farm it. Are you concerned that if they break the tile line that it won't, it won't be uh, fixed and corrected um, I, I, adequately? Well, that's one of the concerns I have. Um, the other concern is going forward. They want to bury a pipeline three feet in the ground. Well, three to four feet in the ground is where most of our tiling is done in that part of the country. Yeah, unless you get an excessively deep outlet. I don't know why you'd build something that dangerous and deadly and not get it. I'd bury it deep enough that people didn't get into it. Well, I wouldn't bury it right at the same depth that everybody's putting their field tile. Makes no sense. So, yeah, it bothers me. Okay. Sooner or later, that's going to need tiling, and what all that water from there pretty much has to go east and south from that end of the field. That's how the land lays. So every time I want to get across that, because you're going to have a hundred and if an inch is however many feet it is, 150 feet or so north of that pipeline to my north fence. How do I get across that pipeline? You can't run water without an outlet. Have you been concerned about the access that Summit wanted to have to the pipeline? Objection. State the objection. Asked and answered. Uh, it's in the direct testimony regarding the provisions of the easement agreement, particularly the access easement. Ms. Colas. No further questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Hi. I just wanted to ask a couple of questions about future plans for your farm. You already mentioned you have one son who uh, I understand is just starting veterinary school. That's correct. And he has already expressed an interest in farming, right? That's, that's all he's ever wanted to do. <laughs> um, and you have another son, too. Yes. And how old's that other son? He's a freshman in his first four years of college over at Dort University. Okay. Uh, and I assume you want to leave your farm to one or both of them? That's correct. Yes. And I would like to be able to give it to them the same way my parents gave it to me without somebody else trying to tell them what they can or can't do on their own ground. Considering as hard as we've worked on that over the years before you had herbicides, if you wanted to kill weeds, you pulled them. <laughs> and we put a lot of effort into that and tried to make it nice, keep it nice, something to be proud of. And then to have people just come and hand you a piece of paper and think you're supposed to be thankful for whatever tiny offer they make you, even though after you pay tax on that money, you're giving up a forever easement for hardly the price of a pickup. That doesn't seem like much for compensation to me. I'm selling out my kids' future for almost nothing. On a per year basis, I don't know, you divide 100000 up by maybe, you know, how many years? That doesn't equal much. And you said, I, I was impressed with this, your older son um, helped pay for college with a small cow-calf operation on your land? He started it when he was in 4-H. Uh, he had some people in our club that were, I don't know how many people have heard of it, but a calf scramble program where they donate the calf and teach you how to kind of show it and how to take care of it. And from that time on, every year he'd usually had two, and he'd keep his heifer, breed her back, and send her, and he went from one head to now he's got 10 cows a bull and 11 calves on the place right now in various stages of growth. And that's what pays his, that and his hay baling business pays his tuition and expenses. And he managed to get through his first four years of school with virtually no debt load. He paid for it as he went. So, so he still has that and has, in fact, continued to grow oh, that yeah. operation. He, the, if you could bring the can, that map up again. Um, the cattle are there on the place with us. If, uh, let's see. Can you, Ray, there you go. If you, uh, 
that section right there. That's basically the, well, the picture is a little old, but there's a building and fence and cement there now, but that's that's the cattle lot. Okay. That's where they all are. So we're looking at that, sort of the brown rectangle just to the right of your Just to the right of the buildings, yes. yes. Okay. Um, I don't know what he's going to do when he gets done with vet school, whether he's going to come home and farm and try to open a vet clinic in the country. It's an option. Whether he'll do that or not, I guess we'll see how things go, but we have some concerns with, you know, our cattle and maybe, who knows, possible clients, people there, you know. Some of his livestock isn't cheap anymore when you're working with high-dollar horses and cattle. And I, it's like every day now we come outside and you think about whenever we go north to Spencer. That could be right there. Every day and night, it's, it's something waiting. It's an accident waiting to happen, only you don't know when. It's not really a matter of if, it's when. And what's going to happen I don't know. It's on our mind a lot. Have you talked with your sons about the pipeline? Probably the older one a little more because he's more interested in the farming aspect. So we, he, he's around more. He knows more about what we've discussed. He's more keyed into the farming side of things than our younger one. Has he indicated that the pipeline might affect his future plans? <sighs> It sure might. I mean, none of us knows what the future brings. I mean, we had cattle years ago, as evidenced by the two silos in the barn in our picture. And I guess when we got rid of those when I was in high school, I wasn't really anticipating getting back in the cattle business. But things we do for our kids. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a concern. So having stability when it comes to ownership and use of your land is important for your family planning. Oh, definitely. I mean, especially for us, we've, well, three and a half, about three miles north of the north edge of our property is my grandparents' farm. Well, it started out as my great-grandparents' farm. It was a century farm in 1903. Uh, my dad always lived within four miles of where he was born. I have lived within a half a mile of where I was born. I've been in that house since 1970. <laughs> so, yeah, stability is a big part of it. You know what you've got. You've worked hard for it. You want to make plans to leave that to somebody. Hopefully they won't have to sell a major chunk of it to pay estate tax if they could ever get that figured out. But you try to plan for the best you can to give them the best future you can like any parent would do for their kids. I hope we can pull it off, but I don't know. That's... It's a big red flag up there. Thank I, you. Well, and I guess another thing is in the easement program, it talks about someone can remove or any, anything that they deem to be an obstruction. Okay? The cattle get turned out in the fall to run on that farm ground. That requires fence and gates. I don't know how that's going to work when you they say they decide that's a problem. So now I can't have cattle on my property without them tearing off the fence? There's a, there's a north property fence. Do I have to build a second fence inside the pipeline to, to keep them so they don't come tear it out on me? I don't know. It's not that much fun building fence. I know that. <laughs> Thank you. That's all the questions I had. Thank you. Ms. Grunegan? I just have one question. Um, in parts of the testimony, you talk about tenants and farm tenants. Do you personally farm this property, or do you rent it out? I personally farm it now. I have been farming it. Okay. Um, with the timing of this, okay, when you started the, the pipeline deal, my mother was passed away. Her estate was not settled yet. The ground was coming to me, but it wasn't mine yet. Since then, now it is. But even before that, I paid her rent, and I still farmed it. I started farming myself in 1987, and I've been farming at my, my dad passed away well, just over 22 years ago. So I've been united together until then, 
and now it's just me. But yeah, we've our family's farmed that since '62. So you, so you were the farm tenant, but now you're the owner. Yes. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Miss, Mr. Jordan. Well, um, as to Miss Ryan's questions about, you don't know what the the future brings. We saw the map from 2000. 16 that didn't show the, the the cattle operation you've got and fair to say that if this pipeline was there it could drastically uh, affect or even retard future growth that your family would want to do on the property is that potential yes definitely and, and so what i take it from you sir is that essentially you just want to be able to do what your family's been doing for over 100 years without the someone else telling you what you can and can't do. That would be preferable, yes. Okay. Yes. And as to the risk, you had mentioned um, the information, the, the evidence here of an 8-inch pipeline having a non-worst-case scenario, but a plume that could travel at least 1,855 foot, and, and you said you're slated for 20-inch. You understand that's many multiples of what an 8-inch would be. Yes. All right. And many multiples. And so having your home on the same property that's targeted is, is a huge concern of yours. It is. It weighs on you. And it's not even there yet. I hope it doesn't get to be there. But you can't help but think about it. I don't want to have kids and grandkids out there and doing things. And we're just we're doing what we do on our farm. Everything we do, pretty much, we were not overly blessed with a lot of daycare <laughs> when the kids were young. So if we were out in the field, they were out there with us. And I, I think that'll be the same way with our kids because that's they loved it. They liked growing up that way. So why would we change it? But I'd sure like to be able to feel safe doing it. Okay. Thank you. I don't have anything further. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Harden. Is your excuse? Appreciate it. Paul Berge. What was the last name? A Berge. Berge. 